Good afternoon or good morning, whatever the case may be. Welcome to the October edition of the Hornet Spotlight. Um, as you well know, school's been up and running for basically two months now. And I think uh, students and staff alike are looking forward to the two-week break that's coming up here uh, very shortly. A reminder to parents that the grading period ends on October 5th. Um, because of the new calendar, we do have some new remediation things in place. I can't speak to the remediation because I'm helping work with that with a couple other teachers. We will be doing remediation uh, two days in each of the uh, intercession, both the intercession and the break week. We will have credit rescue opportunities available for students uh, who are eligible. Those students will be uh, identified on a report card this year. Uh, there will be an a automatic uh, designation if a student is eligible for rescue and it is very similar for those of you who are familiar with it very similar to the winter school we've run the past three uh, semester or past three winter semesters so uh, we are going to do that four times a year this year there will not be any long elongated summer school uh, everything is going to be short we hope to keep the students on pace all year long if a student for some reason whatever reason falls behind a little bit we are going to have uh, four different rescue opportunities of five days each, which when you total it up, it's more than what we're used to doing. So that will be an opportunity available to uh, students and parents, uh, both of the, both the intercession and break week in October. Again, the grading period ends October 5th. Grade cards should come out approximately, um, probably the, the uh, 10th or 11th of October, and we plan on starting remediation uh, actually that week while we're still in session. Enrichment opportunities during the um, intercession week will come from the central office. Dr. Hammock is busy working on those, putting the, a lot of neat activities together. I know our guidance people are working on some college visits. I know that uh, we are at the Buzz Clubs looking for some opportunities to uh, do some enrichment programs as well. So the, the balanced calendar uh, some of the benefits will kick in this month, but for a lot of students, they will uh, have uh, a couple weeks off. Just a reminder to those parents of students in Central 9, this is also new with the new calendar, that Central 9 students, the second week, uh, what is called our break week, Central 9 will be in session, and we will be providing transportation for those students, and the expectation is that they will attend Central 9 either in the morning or the afternoon of the second week of the uh, intercession. I believe we, on our calendar it's called break week. Central 9 is not in session during our intercession, uh, but uh, during break week they are, and our, we are gonna provide transportation, and the expectation will be that our students attend. So there are the, some of the nuts and bolts with the academics. Um, again, we, we will be in school two weeks, and we'll take two weeks off in October, and we'll come back uh, fresh and rejuvenated and ready to go in November. Um, October, whether we're in school or not, means wind down for a lot of uh, activities in uh, sports. We'll start with the athletics. Uh, the golf season, believe it or not, has already ended. Uh, the girls golf team finished one spot away from qualifying for the regional, so uh, they, they showed great improvement over the course of the year. Uh, Coach Adamson did just a great job with the girls golf team. Um, of course, the boys' tennis team, uh, they're, they're nearing their sectional. Coach Moore uh, and, and the boys' tennis team, is wind, they're winding down now, as are both soccer teams. Uh, the girls' soccer team is having a really, really good season, one of the best seasons we've had in quite a while. And, and they're looking forward to county tournament and sectional, sectional tournament, as are the boys. Uh, of course, we had a huge, huge homecoming win against Crawfordsville. That game will not soon be forgotten. Uh, I think the comeback by Crawfordsville may be the part that a lot of people will remember, but it was an outstanding victory for us in homecoming. And uh, as we move on, uh, we, have, we have real hopes of a winning football season again this year. I, don't think, I think it's been three years since we've had a winning season, and I know the football coaches and the players are looking forward to the um, sectional tournament. Uh, volleyball is on a real nice winning streak right now, and they have to be considered one of the favorites for their sectional tournament as well. So we have a lot of sports that are winding down. 
A lot of the a lot of the activities in October. The only time you're going to see the team is in tournament series. So make sure that you uh, uh, stay close to our website, stay close to the TV, and keep abreast of our athletics. Also, get on the Twitter, get on the uh, Facebook account that Coach Daniels working diligently on uh, to stay up to date with up to the minute with with Hornet act activities on the athletic fields. Um, Another big thing, obviously, in October is band. Uh, Mr. Wynn, Mr. Bradburn, and Mr. Carney and all of their assistants have the band looking good, sounding good. They're winning contest after contest each weekend. I know that Mr. Wynn is pacing it. Uh, the important stuff is yet to come, but make sure you support the band. They are, they are tremendous this year. They were great last year. It could be even better this year. So. Make sure you follow Mr. Wynn and the exploits of the Marching Hornets. Uh, again, you can follow the band on Facebook, Twitter, on our website, uh, TV, a lot of different places. Keep, keep up with the band because uh, we're expecting some really fantastic things from the band in the month of October and early November. Um, now, the main thing. For the month of October, we have another alumnus of the month. And I think... Uh, we, we did a cursory check a couple times, and we believe we have a first here, the first member of the class of 1993 uh, that has been inducted, and his name is Mr. Joe Guthrie, and he comes to us from Columbus, Indiana. Mm -hmm. We're not going to talk about how fast he got here today. That would probably <laughs> be a sore subject, but uh, congratulations to Mr. Guthrie thank for you. your selection, and thank you for coming up today, taking time out of your work week to come up and join us for the Hornet Spotlight. Thank you for having me. Um, we'll talk about a little bit about your background and where mm -hmm. you came from. We'll kind of, as we talk, we'll, we'll work our way to that. All right. But you mentioned some things that you were involved in here before we mm -hmm. went on air, some of the things that you were involved with when you were here at Beach Grove. Tell us, to, and you talked about where you lived. We were, mm -hmm. You pointed that out to me as we were coming down here. Tell us a little bit about what the Grove was like in the late 80s, early 90s. Talk to us a little bit about some of your favorite classes, some of your favorite teachers, favorite activities. We had a memorable homecoming not too long ago. Tell us a little bit about some of your memories from Beach Grove High School. I have a lot. Uh, let's it's see. It's a great place. Isn't it? <laughs> it's a great place. I, uh, uh, I remember a lot of the extracurricular activities. I, I remember some of the classes, but I think the extracurriculars were always most important to me for some reason. Uh, I enjoyed band after, after school. I enjoyed, uh, enjoyed football, basketball, all that stuff. Um, I do remember homecoming. Uh, I was, I was homecoming king one year, if I remember correctly. So that was quite a shock, but it's something I've never forgotten. Um, you know, it's always stuck with me. So, uh, and I lived, uh, I lived pretty close to here for for a while. I lived, uh, I lived in Diplomat South, which is now I can't remember the name of it as I drove in, but I lived there for a little while. Uh, Beach Meadows. So I, I've always been close to the high school. Pretty, yeah, Beach Meadows. Thanks. Yeah. So I've always been close to the high school. Um, as far as classes, um, math was always my favorite. And I'll never forget one of the. I've heard this many times since, but uh, but during at this point in my life, I had never heard it before. My math teacher told us, he said that he had forgotten more math than we would ever learn, and uh, it seemed that seems to be true still to this day. He was an incredibly smart guy, and uh, I appreciated having him as a teacher. And then uh, other class, my other two probably favorite classes would probably be English with I believe his name was Mr. Daly. Mm -hmm. um, got a lot out of that class, and then my Spanish class. And her name is escaping me at the moment. She will kill me if she sees this. But uh, um, she was also the softball coach. But um, but I really enjoyed Spanish um, and really enjoyed English. Um, those are probably my favorite classes, I'd say. Uh, you mentioned you played football and mm -hmm. basketball. Mm -hmm. Of those two, which were your was your favorite there? Hmm, probably basketball, I'd say. I played basketball all four years. Uh, football, I think I only did twi two, two years. I think I, I held off my senior year. Uh, basketball was a, a lot of fun. Uh, my, my freshman year, I think it was my freshman year, maybe my sophomore year, we uh, uh, we won sectionals. Um, uh, that was, I think, the leader of the team that year was Jeff Stewart. That was that was a good team. Um, that was a big win for us. Very exciting. Something I'll never forget. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely basketball out of the two. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned math. Yeah. And uh, you clearly uh, were very. Uh, I don't know whether driven is the right word, but you have you have a. a a disposition for math because of yeah. your choice of college. Tell us a little bit about, you attended Rose Holman. Uh, tell did. us a little bit about what went into that choice and, and the process that you looked <laughs> at 
uh, with regard to the, your choice of college because you did, uh, I, we, as we talked, the, uh, the gentleman, Dr. Mm -hmm. uh, Stamper. Stamper. Stamper, that's why we're going to edit these. <laughs> Dr. Stamper, who we had last week, was yeah. is the dean of faculty at Rose now, and a yep. Rose graduate, so we're, we're hitting the engineers in Rose hard this year. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what your thought process was as you went through high school in, in terms of what you were going mm -hmm. to do once you leave and how you prepared and then how that how that followed up with your choice of, of Rose Holman as your four years school. Well, there was really no question. Uh, math was always my better subject. Math and sciences I always did better. And I, I just, for some reason, that just connects with me. Some people connect with the English better or, or other classes better. That math, math makes sense to me. It's logical to me. So. Uh, I remember the day actually I decided to uh, to apply to Rose. Uh, we were in the lunchroom, I think, eating lunch that day, and they had uh, some stands set up with different applications for different colleges. And you know, we had IU and Purdue and some of the other locals in in, te in, the, in the state. And I really hadn't considered Rose at that point because I knew that requirements were a little stiffer, and I, I really wasn't sure that I would get in at that point. So I remember uh, I was sitting there thinking about it, and my friends convinced me, "I'll just fill it out, try it. You never know." And uh, and when I, so, so that was basically the, the process I followed to go there, is I knew it was a good math school. I wasn't sure technically if I was going to be able to do it, but, uh, but I, so I, I filled it out there and, uh, and I got the news back probably a month later and was in complete shock, um, very excited. And then, uh, and then my parents had to worry about how to, how to get me over there and get me through it. So uh, yeah, it was definitely uh, and, and Rose Exciting. was your first choice. That's where you by far my first choice because I, I had, you know, and, and it's strange. It's not a it's not a very, uh, you know, if you walk around the state, not a lot of people know about it. Um, but as I told you earlier, it's it's been ranked number one engineering school in the country for 14 years straight now. So uh, the thing is, if if people know about Rose, they say that it's, it's they're all all about it. It's incredible. But if you don't know about it, it's like you've never even heard of it. It's it's one or the other. There's no in between. So. I think one of the things they're working on now is trying to get their image out there a little more publicly. But um, yeah, so. And, and now, were you thinking in terms of engineering at that point, or were you? Yeah. It was engineering all the way. Yeah, I knew. Uh, yeah, especially once I got the acceptance letter, acceptance letter from Rose. At that point, it was just trying to figure out what type of engineering I wanted to go into. I ended up choosing computer because I I, I like software, I like computers, and and I knew that way I would get some of the electrical engineering, which is more sensors and circuits that kind of thing and then uh, and then still get to do some of the software so i was lucky i, I was lucky in that I, I knew what i wanted to do going in so i that's I, rare too it is it is that's it, it's very hard to do that um so try try to if you can <laughs> if, you, if you can do that in high school and know what you want you're you're ahead of the game so and so you went in to two rows knowing what you wanted to do mm -hmm. and had pretty good expectations of what it was going to be i did uh, I, I knew from a class, I knew what it was going to be. Uh, what I didn't realize is, is just how, how different it was going to be when I got there, how much of a, a study shock it was going to be. It took, me, it took me a while to get used to it. Um, in high school, I, it, it wasn't, the schedule is just so different when you get there. There's so much more to do, and they work on a trimester rather than you know, semesters, which is what some, some colleges work to. So there was a lot of credits and a lot of, a lot of hours, a lot of studying and a lot of late nights. Uh, it was kind of it was shock to me the first year, but once once I got through that first year, it was it was okay. That was the answer to the question I was getting ready to ask was the <laughs> difference between high school and college, and yeah. it was pretty pronounced. Yeah, it you, was even knowing what you want and knowing where you're going, and and it it, it still can you can you give me some specifics on on the things that yeah. really kind of caught your eye? Uh, well, just the amount of work and the amount that you're asked to do when you get there. Uh, I, one of the things I realized or very early on when I got there was that I, I had not developed very good study habits. I, I just, I didn't have a good, a good method to, to take the information in and then be able to recite it back out. So one of the first things I had to learn was to, was to better study, better prepare for things so that I could, you know, get through the classes and without much trouble. That was rough. First year was rough. First year was rough everywhere. <laughs> and let me, let me, because we're going to talk about your, what you do for a living in a minute, mm -hmm. but you're pretty much what you went in there for is what you mm -hmm. do now. It to, is to a certain I, degree. To a certain degree, I um, yeah. Now, I, then my question then is, when you went in and you went in the, what the fall of '93. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How much of what you do now wasn't even a part of the technology at that time? You, you understand hmm. what I'm asking you? 
Yeah, I, I do understand what you're asking. I, because we tell kids right now that we're trying to prepare them to think and prepare them to be able to do things for positions yeah. or jobs that don't even exist. Was that, was that quite kind what you of, saw? Uh, not to the same extent, though. I know what you're getting at. The technology, it is changing very rapidly. So, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people, when they come out of high school now, are going to see completely different things when they get out. But in, in the field I'm in, though, um, a lot of a lot of the technology, you know, diesel engines, it doesn't change too much. We're adding adding new things here and there, but it's not groundbreaking every year. Whereas, you know, the technology field right now, you see something new every year, mm -hmm. and it's something nobody is even prepared for. So, um, so it's it wasn't completely new. Um, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that. So, but still, uh, the education never ends. No, no, you're always learning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you let's talk about your job a little bit you did you go straight to cummins from rose hallman or did you i did i actually some uh, not directly I, I when i got out of college i you know a couple months there in the summer where i didn't do anything and then and then i actually started with uh, a contract company um, which was really nice because uh, i i went to i worked for a company up in anderson indiana delco who they also do engines as well but mm -hmm. Um, I worked, you know, I got to go down to Austin, Texas a couple times, um, work on some national instruments and data acquisition software. It's called LabVIEW. I did that for a while. Um, so I got to work on a few different projects in that first year. And it was nice just to get out there and, and just start seeing all this stuff right when I got out of college. But then about a year after that is when uh, we had another guy in the company that decided to move on. Um, but uh, as, a, as a company, we didn't want to lose our spot um, in Cummins, so we wanted to put somebody in there. And so I went and interviewed with them. And then, uh, so then I started working for Cummins as a contractor. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, I spent probably 11 years as a contractor doing, uh, just working on different projects and various projects. And then, but then in uh, 2008, I, I decided I wanted to go direct and work straight for Cummins, which was a great decision. Um, and since then, it's, I've been working on one project and which we can go into that now if you want to. Yeah, or, go right ahead. Yeah. I, right now what I do is uh, I, I'm a control systems engineer for, uh, for our diesel engines for a lot of the uh, larger engines. So we're talking 19 and, and 78 liter engines. So like, you know, 20 feet tall. And, and uh, in the display case, I have a couple pictures you, you'll be able to see if you ever come by there. Uh, you know, the tires on these trucks are, you know, 15 feet tall and just massive, massive engines. But anyways, what I do is um, as a controls engineer, I make sure that all these sensors we have placed around the engine to monitor things like engine speed and, and intake temperatures and, and things like that, I, I make sure that those are all routed to the ECM, which is a computer that sits on the engine, kind of like what's in your cars. And uh, I make sure that the ECM, the software in the, in, in the ECM is, is properly reading all that information, properly interpreting all that information, and then properly telling the engine what to do from that point on. So it's basically just making sure that the engine is, is doing what the user is telling it to and it's not going to blow itself up. So. And you, and you work exclusively, excuse me, exclusively with diesel engines. Yep. And you've been doing that since '08. Yeah, since '08. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you you know the diesel inside now. Yeah, it's getting. Um, it's getting. You mentioned again before we came on air. You married a, a Grover. I did. Class of '94. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about your family, if you don't mind. I have a. My wife is Jennifer. Some some of you will know her as Jennifer Clayton. Others will know her now as Jennifer Guthrie, but she is class of 94. Um, we, uh, let's see, we married 1999, so not, yeah, a couple years after I got out of college. And then, uh, then we started a family shortly thereafter. I have, uh, I have a 10-year-old daughter who is very busy, keeps us both very busy. She's a big dancer. I've actually been here a couple times in the past few years because some of her dance competitions are right here in the auditorium, so that's been nice. Uh, and my son, he's eight years old. He's uh, big into karate, basketball, and baseball, and loving it. Both doing well in school, great kids, and couldn't ask for anything more. Having a good time. I am enjoying yeah, it. Keeping you busy. Oh, they are. <laughs> <laughs> they I don't even have time for hobbies anymore. I'm too busy running them around. So. Well, yeah, you kind of, you know, that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> and the, you, your life becomes theirs. Um, again, we are very uh, happy to have Mr. Joe Guthrie from the class of 1993 here today. And on behalf of the Renaissance Committee, I'd like to th present Joe with a, a little token of appreciation for coming up today and, and sharing with us. Um, we have uh, uh, one thing we probably should have rem uh, reminded people of. In October, we expect to open a new part of the building. And with all the scientists we have, uh, Dr. Samper last month and, and Mr. Guthrie this month, uh, and we. 
I rest assured we will have some more science people in before the school year is up, but uh, we will be, we do plan to open that wing and, and we look forward to that. Uh, some expanded classroom space for the applied science. I know Dr. Kaiser has been working very hard with his team on that and they're looking uh, very forward to that and we hope next month we will, or actually this month, October, we will have that ready to go. Again, our thanks to Mr. Joe Guthrie from the class of 1993, the uh, Renaissance Committee selection for the Alumnus of the Year for October of 2012. Again, thank you for watching the Hornet Spotlight, and we will see you next month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.